Welcome back to the Tapes Archive Podcast, where we release interviews that have never been heard before. In this episode, we have the Prince of Darkness, Ozzy Osbourne. At the time of this interview in 1997, Osbourne was 49 years old and was promoting his multi-band tour, OzFest. In the interview, Ozzy talks about his love for his fans, how the Sabbath reunion came to be, Marilyn Manson, and the legacy of OzFest. What? Good evening, Ozzy. Hello there. How are you? Fine. As always, we have music critic Mark Allen at the helm conducting the interview. If you'd like to support the show, please like, follow, and subscribe to us on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram. There, we post other content and information not available on the podcast. If you'd like to read the transcripts for any of our episodes, please head over to our website at thetapesarchive.com. We'll jump into the interview after a quick word from our sponsors. The Tapes Archive is proud to be sponsored by the true crime documentary, Dead Man's Line. You've got a hundred armed officers around here trying to get a shot at me. I dared them to shoot me. I didn't go down there to be a buffoon. I went down there for vengeance. And by God, I have vengeance. In 1977, Tony Karitsis kidnapped a mortgage broker and held him captive for three days. For the first time ever, the media was able to cover the event live. To some, Tony was a hero. To others, he was a crazed thug. Dead Man's Line. The True Story of Tony Karitsis. This award-winning film is available exclusively on Amazon Prime. One last thing before we get to the interview, the Tapes Archive podcast is a proud member of Osiris Media, a global community connecting passionate fans with podcasts and experiences about artists and topics you love. Thanks for tuning in, and now it's time to open the vault. How are you? I'm fine. Good. Well, first thing, thanks for talking to me. It's been a long time. And uh, I I also want to say, you know, every time I've seen you perform over the last five, six years or so, you you seem genuinely surprised and pleased by the fan adoration. You know, they just love you. And pleased, I can understand. But but why are you so, why are you surprised? Well, it's every time I go out. I mean, mean, I've been doing it a long time, you know. I mean, mean, and and I've lasted a hell of a long run, you know. I mean, I mean, I'm just... I'm absolutely thrilled to, to be on stage and playing for, for people who want to see me because I've never really raised myself as a great singer. But, I mean, I've got such a love for them people. It's just, uh, it's, uh, it's, an, uh, uh, it's like a love affair. That, that it's, like, it's like when you wait for a girlfriend, you know, and, you, and you're all, all bubbly and all excited to see her. And then when you see, you get all that r- nice feeling inside when you see the person you really want to be with, you know, and that's what I feel with my audience. You know? I really genuinely do have a love affair with my audience. It's, 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 it's really amazing. It's better than any drug, any, any, anything I've ever had, the, the, the audience feeling I get. So that's why retirement sucked. Huh? Absolutely. Absolutely. I miss my girlfriend, you know. Yeah. Um, This tour, I mean, it seems to me, and I don't know if you have the same success in other cities that you that you do in Indianapolis. But every time you come here, there's fifteen thousand or so people, and this tour seems like, man, really piling it on. Why are you, you know, you could go out solo and get the the same number of people. Why are you doing this whole huge tour? Well, well, the reason why is because eventually the inevitable thing is going to happen. Well, well, as I do retire, you know, I mean, eventually everything comes to an end. But I'd like to leave my mark, and I'd like the Oz to go on with or without me, you know, as long as I'm involved to some capacity. It'll be there for a long time, you know. I mean, I want to be involved some, to some capacity, whether I'm playing or not. But, so it's my way of saying I am still here, you know. I'm not, I haven't quite gone away, you know. I'm thinking of the long-term thing, you know. You're not going away anytime soon, are you? I mean, you're not stopping, are you? No way. No, okay, I I think so. The reason why the uh, sorry. I mean, no, two, three. Excuse me, one second. Okay, sure. Four number four. Um. I was just saying that. You, you were saying that you were going to be sticking with it for a while, I think. I mean, I, I, I mean, I, I mean as Murphy's Law goes, uh, anything can happen at any given moment. So when my wife came up with a suggestion at the beginning of the uh, middle of last year, and so about the Oscars, I said, do you think we're going to buy up more than we can chew? And I know I could do it on my own. I could, I could sell these plays out on my own. But I, I liked, I've been, always been a kind of a pioneer throughout my career, and I love to give people the, people the benefit of the doubt, you know. I love the, I love the shock. Like Marilyn Manson, it's great. <laughs> okay, I was, I was going to ask you about that about that later, but uh, uh, do you 
have a, a sense of, of why people have stuck with you over the years? I mean, aside from the fact that they like your music, is there something about I you? Or... I, I, I don't know, and I don't really want to know. I'm just, I'm just, I mean, I'm one of these people that if I find out the four year, I'll fall to pieces. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, how did the Sabbath reunion idea come come to? Well, that? you know, I've been, I've been asked time and time, and you, you mean, every time I walk out my bloody door, someone says, will there ever be a chance of, of, of seeing you? Unfortunately, it's not quite Black Sabbath because Billy's not there. You know, but right. it's the best part of it. It's, it's a good part of Black Sabbath. I mean, we'll be able to play the old stuff with the, with the guitar, but Michael Borden and my drummer's going to be playing drums, it looks like. But, uh, you know, uh, we're just going to play as much as we, the best we can, and for, just to put it at rest, because nobody plays the guitar like I am with them Sabbath songs, you know, and nobody, you know, Jesus is a great, great bass player, so is Michael Borden a good drummer, you know, but, and, 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 and you know, I've rehearsed it, I hadn't played with them for a long, long time, and I don't know why we ever bothered rehearsing. Book, who just played, you know. <laughs> and, and how does it sound? Is it like you never left, or is it a whole different feeling? Like? It's, it's still like I never left, because I mean, I've been solo longer than I was with Sabbath, but we grew up together. We went to the same, we lived in, within a two-mile radius of each other, and it's like going back to see your family, you know. It's like a family reunion, so we, you know, we just talked about how each other's mums and dads were, you know. Unfortunately, Tony's mother just passed away last year, which is very sad. And uh, we just have, we, we spent a lot of time I'm just reflecting on the old times, you know, when we did the, I did this crazy stuff and they did that crazy stuff and the, and the first time we came to the States and, and it was just great to talk about old war stories and remember when you we did this and I did that and you did this, you know. Have there been any great memories on Earth? I mean, can you tell me one story of the old days that you've been talking oh, about? I mean, I mean, I remember when we first came to the States and we all got on the plane from Heathrow Airport and we were freaked out that the fucking plane was in the air for seven hours without stopping for gas. We were fucking freaked out. We were, I mean, we thought, well, this fucking thing's the size of a house. It's got to stop for petrol somewhere, you know? <laughs> yeah, no place to stop, I mean, really. The, 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 the length of the flight to seven hours, it was like forever, you know? Uh, yeah. Why isn't Bill Ward with you? Oh, to be honest with you, it's not, it's not my to do. I mean, I, I just, uh, Sharon said to me, what do you think about getting back to the suburbs? So, and I said, well, ask them, you know? I'm, I've always been going, but it gets, it's like, it's like the old story was that we all got individual managers, and it wasn't so much the band, but the band and the managers. Not saying my wife, but but uh, my wife I was the only one that's uh, up to par with the, the current, the present situation. Where not not, not, not putting anybody down, here, but but but, but uh, there's a sort of a communication breakdown was going on in the past. And so I said to Sharon, "Well, if you can pull it up, pull it up." And I just said, oh, "I'm here, and, I'm, and I'm, I'm I'm willing to give it a shot." And I spoke to Geezer and Tony and Geezer. I said, well, after, after the last time, they went out with Bill and it just didn't work because uh, of circumstances. It's nothing personal that I have against Bill Ward. It's just that when I go on stage, no matter what I'm feeling, I have to give the best show I've got and leave my petty, uh, or whatever it was, I call them petty, but it may, may be pretty serious to the people that are involved. So leave, leave all your problems in the dressing room and pick them up when you get off stage and start right. crazy, going crazy. But you don't take your problems on stage with you, you know, it's, bad. it's professionally not acceptable in my, my opinion. Because the audience don't want to know what you do, what you like, and it's like all they want to do is bang their heads and reflect on the past. You know, can you or are you willing to elaborate on what Bill Ward's problems are? I, I, I don't really know, but, uh, but, but I, don't, I don't know whether I mean it's, it's Tony and Giza who they have to play the music. I mean, it would have been great for me to get up there with Bill and everybody, but uh, unfortunately, I'm not going to start slagging Bill off because I'm, I mean I don't I don't have anything bad to say about the man, but uh, but. But Tony and Giza had played with him since I'd left, and, and they, they, they said it just wouldn't work. And I said, well, why wouldn't it work? And they told me why. And I, and I, I, don't, I don't want to repeat what they said to me because it's not my place to. I suggest if you really, I'm not being so sarcastic here, but if you, if you really want to find out, I suggest you ask them about it because, I mean, I, I, just, I, I, I just can't be bothered to take any fucking buddy dirty laundry on you. Know? It's, it's, not, it's not fair on Bill and it's not fair on me, you know. Okay. And, 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 and another thing, it's certainly not fair on the people that want to see you know because right. all they want to see here is see is us on that stage and play the music that we were so so uh, for such a long time have been uh, uh, been uh, Acknowledged for playing, you know, in that time, you know, mm -hmm. See, you know all this personal shit. It's, 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 it's no, there's nothing to do with anybody else, to be honest. With you, by, by the four of us, and maybe one day, one day it may happen. But I'm fed up with saying yes, it's going to happen. And at the start, it so it happens, and a firework goes up, and it all runs away again, you know. So 
I said, I said, I'm willing, I'm here. You get it together one way or another, and just give me a call and tell me where and when you want to do it, and I'll be there. The last time I ended up having an alliance matter, and I ended up with fucking with a big pair of teeth mark in my neck, <laughs> and I didn't like it, you know, because all of a sudden it was all my fucking fault, and I, and I, said, and I didn't want to get involved in that capacity. So, as far as the Bill Ward situation, I really don't have that much to say to anybody because I don't really know, but, but all I got from Tony and Giza was that it really wouldn't work because they tried it, and it, it, you guys still with it then you know okay fair enough it's been advertised that you're playing a whole solo set and a whole sabbath set is that correct uh, uh, I mean, uh, it's, uh how long do you call a set i mean well, you, you, you usually play 90 minutes to an hour and three quarters i think something like that yeah okay and sabbath too we'll also uh, do i don't really know i've got to I've got, i did do some rehearsals but but then it's it's kind of went crazy and then i went out and, and i went out I went around and around the world trip on my own to, to get away from that's what I do periodically I go so I went to a, a Europe for a while you know just tracks around Europe for about a month or so so I, I, I'll let you know if you want to give me a call back next Wednesday I'll let you know more, you know <laughs> okay. uh, do you know we I mean, did try rehearsing because Sharon said well why don't, you, why don't you just have a jam with us if you could you see if you could still play together and, and, and I and I'm not being cocksure here but I thought I had a little smile to myself I thought we haven't got a fucking rehearsal he's got to see each other just turn around and fucking play, you know. So as I say, when we when we did meet before I went on this this European track of mine, we, we, we played a couple of tunes, and I says, "Well, how you going, Tom? How you doing? What's what's going on with you?" And you know, I haven't seen for so long. Good to see you. And we just turned up sitting on a couch talking about old days, you know. Okay, so at this point, you don't even know like how deep into the catalogue you're going to go. Or well, what, we're or not going to do. We're going to do what, 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 I was, what I did remember saying to them. I said, "We're going to do the classic film, but I would like to do some of the songs." that we've never really played live on stage like songs I'm not going to tell you what we're going to play because I want it to be a surprise there'll be the Iron Man's and the War Pigs and the Paranoid but there's going to be some other stuff that was interesting to us to play you know we've never really played live on stage ever Oh, that'll be great. Okay. Well, then, that'll be great. Yeah, that'll be, that'll be it's, 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 it's the kind of the old stuff. It's not the old album. When we wrote them songs, we, we used to play them live, you understand, before we recorded them. So that, when we used to record them, we virtually recorded them live anyway, you know. Mm, there's a, an internet chat that uh, you participated in, and you, and you said, uh, so much of what's out there these days I don't listen to. It's so angry. Uh, well, that's true. I mean, I, mean, I mean, it's kind of like, when I say it's so angry... It, it, Nobody sings a song with any kind of a melody, you know. It's, 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 I mean, everybody sounds pissed off, and it's like, I like to sort of semi understand what I'm listening to. There's was really going like, you know, sort of yelly down the fucking thing, you know. It's, I mean, there's more ways, there's many ways to deliver a hard line without screaming, you know. Okay, so you weren't necessarily talking about people being. The approach that these people have to the, but, the, but, but, but that's, that's the next generation from me. So it's like, I suppose when we started, people were saying the same about us, you know, they couldn't understand what the fuck we were singing because I was so used to listening to lollipop music, you know. Right. How does Marilyn Manson fit into that statement about that? Well, well, I like Marilyn Manson because they've they, they, they got a shock value. Uh, and I, have, I can't really speak on, on that music because I haven't really, I've, 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 I've heard the one such, I kind of saw the video, I thought he was very dark, very. But he, he, he made me go, hmm, this looks interesting, you know? I like I like them because, you know, you, you take them or you fucking don't, you know? There's no there's no bullshit about them, you know? They, they, just, they just are what they are. And apparently they wear their, their, their makeup and stuff all the time, you know? So it's, they don't come off stage but get into a three-piece suit and get into a fucking sports car and drive off with a blonde lady chick with big tits and then by the side of them, you know? <laughs> they yeah, like, put up for real, you know? I mean, people have tried to ban you and, and censor you over the years. Like Passing the torch on, and I'll probably pass. Obviously, they'll probably pass the torch. I mean, we started with Black Sabbath, then it went to Kiss, then it went to Alice. Alice Cooper was with Sabbath, and it's kind of, it's kind of from that to this. To this. It's, it's all the same fucking. It's all the same jacket with a different style, you know. Right. Is it amazing to you that the 25 years later they're still trying to, to stop people it, like this? I mean, I, I was, I, I was waiting for somebody like Marilyn Manson to come and wake these fucking dormant puns up again, you know. Uh -huh. Okay. You're starting your own record label? Yeah, 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 yeah. What is it called? Oz Records. Oz Records. And, and uh, you know, I'd like to talk to you and say that it's not primarily a metal label. The mistake I made was calling it Oz Records because everybody thinks it's a metal label, and it's not. I mean, uh, whatever, whatever we think is suitable, we'll go for. I mean, I mean it's, it goes across the world from jazz, rock, blues, 
folk, all kinds of different stuff. So, I mean, don't anybody who reads this article, don't just think it's a primarily a metal label because that's, that's far from the truth. It's just a, it's just a fun, we've just opened some new offices in, in, in Los Angeles and it's a really funky vibe there, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, when's your first release coming out? We're just going to put the, the, the last, the, the, we're gonna, the, the live album from the last Isles Fest is just quite, it's really good, it's very good. Oh, okay. So that's going to be the first release, and then uh, so, yeah. have you signed acts? Are you going out and doing the A and R? No. Oh, okay. We've got enough with these horse fists. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, um, have you heard some of the the young acts? That, uh, yeah, it's really, it's, it's, it's a really, and it, it's got it's really a lot of energy. And there's, there's, there's a load of bands that the, I mean, I just did a record for the Howard, the Howard Stern thing with Type O Negative there on the album, and they're, they're, they're really good. It's it's, it's, it's a very very it's a very good album. I'm really pleased with it, you know. Yeah. Okay. Best Buy is sponsoring this, uh, yeah, this yeah. tour, right? Do you have any any feeling about that? I mean, here's a, a company where you can't buy a stickered album if you're under 18. Oh, I, I, I'm, that's purely my wife. My wife runs the business side of it, so I mean, finally we've got somebody that's been interested in, in the event rather than than the backlash. You know, I mean, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't understand what. I mean, I'm glad in one way that we're, we're the rock and roll tour that everybody loves to hate because I mean, it's kind of like I like that part, kind of publicity angle on it you know because it's it's, it's a nasty it, it, people think it's nasty but it's nice you know but how, how about Best Buy do you have a feeling about that I mean it, it, uh, I, I don't actually I, Best Buy I mean uh, my, my wife got the deal worked out and uh, I don't really know what the, what the implications are with the deal I mean Okay. It's just full part parts of the business, you know. And I must confess at this point, I'm not a very good businessman. I'm not, I'm not business minded at all. Although I, I, I want to give people a fair crack. Uh, with Best Buy, they seem to have been okay with us, you know. They haven't put any restrictions on us at all. Yeah. Yeah, I know they're not putting restrictions on you. I just think it's it's kind of ironic. You've got Marilyn Manson who have stickers on their album and an 18, a kid who's under but 18. You know, when you put a sticker on an album, it, it, so it flies at the box quicker because people <laughs> think with the sticker, it's got to have some controversies so that I want to buy the controversy. Right. Yeah. <laughs> best way to sell an album with a fucking sticker on it. Okay, the, uh, the, one of the, the best parts, uh, parts of the your last tour was the movies at the beginning of yeah, it. Yeah, we're going to have the same really? again, but not the same video. We're going to do, I think, I think my wife's working on a new one. We're going to put that, out, that, that, that all on video cut out on a, on a Oz Records video thing. It's, it's really interesting, really funny. It's, it's, a good, it's a good spoof. Yeah, oh, it was very, very funny. Yeah, it, was, it was a great There's opening. a load of them that we never got played, you know. We, this is a shit that we're going to be we're putting out on the video at any time now. It's, all the stuff we never put on the show is coming out. It's really a fucking funny thing. It's very funny. Oh, I'm looking forward to that. That should be yeah, great. Yeah. Um, two quick other things I'll let you go. One is um, in the Howard Stern movie, were you, uh, uh, you're in the movie, but when the actual event happened, were you actually backstage at the MTV Awards when he did no, that? No, 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 no. Oh, okay. So you just happened to be in the movie, that's yeah, all. Yeah, I mean, uh, Howard's a very good friend. He's a very good uh, first friend of mine, you know. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. He's another one that's very uh, uh, mis mis misunderstood, you know. He's a very sweet man, you know. Yeah. Very Caring man. Okay, and uh, and finally, uh, the question I wanted to ask you was for another story I'm working on. I've been asking everybody I interview it, if you became the overlord of pop music, what would be the first thing that you would change? Uh, censorship. Yeah, you, you, there just wouldn't be any. Pardon? There wouldn't be any. Is that what you're saying? Because, uh, it's freedom of the art, you know. I mean, I mean because there's more. I mean, uh, censorship is, is, is ludicrous. I mean, but then, then again, when you got censorship, you got people for the shock value right about killing people and harming people. Yeah, I just want to ask you one other thing. Do you think that that um, has, has there ever been anything to fear from rock and roll music? The only thing to fear is fear itself. Right. <laughs> okay. All right, that's great. Anything else you want me to tell people, Ozzy? Just come to the show and have the best time of your life. Okay, that's great. I really appreciate it. I'll talk to you again. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Hey, thanks for listening to the Tapes Archive podcast. Please remember you can always find more information about the show and the individual episodes at our website, thetapesarchive.com. Until next time, the vault is closed.